Top of the morning, friends and family. How you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? I'm here with my buddy Todd Cornwell. Todd has created the first ever Brian Cusco starter kit. We need, <laughs> we need, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> we need to see that thing. I'll put a. I, we have a picture of it, right? Or something. I we sent can, it to you. Yeah, you see, he sent me the picture here. I'm gonna put it here. There's the Brian Cusco starter kit. So if you have aspirations, as I know many of you have. <laughs> Have so uh, uh, ex expressed that you you might want to be a little bit more like me. Well, there's your starter kit. You're going to be a little bit more like me. Don't Got a do lot it. of camera expenses though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of camera expenses to get this. Oh, that's that's true. So what 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 is it you say you do here exactly? Tom? Well, um, I'm actually a reptile rescue. Um, 2008. You know, I wanted my kids to learn stuff more than just cats and dogs. So Pretty much when they were growing up, they had we had all kinds of stuff. Snakes, lizards, ferret, whatever, we've had it. Ducks, geese, and kind of ended up being, people wanted to know more about it, so I started educating, and, and I said, if I'm gonna use animals, I'm gonna do it for the animals, and became a rescue. And I've been doing this since 2008. How often would you say that you bring in um, like rescues? How often do you get? <laughs> Sometimes it's every day a week. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. Um, I also do the calls for Fresno PD. I've gotten four calls from Fresno Sh Police Department in one day. Wow. Before. But most of those are just remove and relocate a gopher snake. That's still <clears throat> that's, cool. That's, you know, that's, that's better than somebody chopping his head off thinking it's a That's exactly you why know? I do it. I don't, I don't get paid for it. None of, you know, rescues, I don't get paid for that. I just go out and do it just for the animals. Well, I'd say I'd say the first thing we should do is maybe check out some of the animals. Do you have any animals here you're re of rehabilitating course. right now? Picked up this girl. I believe it's girl. I didn't even check actually, and she was burned. Had complete scale rot. You can still see a little bit of the burn, her tail in there, but she's almost completely healed. I still got to get a couple of eye caps, but they need several layers. She needs to shed a couple of more times. It's they're really stuck on their good, but. Those will eventually come off. I got the infection gone out of them. That's the main thing. So now it's just a matter of getting those uh, out of there. But I was really worried about this. When I got her, opened the bag up, it was just literally the smell would gag you from the rotting scales. Um, I had sent you yeah, videos yeah, you of it earlier. Yeah. I don't know if you can, can incorporate a little in, bit yeah. of that because you could just see the skin and just rawness in the in the. All of her scoot scales underneath the scoots and everything was just literally gray and rotting, and it the smell was terrible. But that's two weeks of proper care. That's amazing. That's you know, amazing. treating her. I mean, literally had to scrub it clean. You know, scrub it clean, and pull off any and all dead skin I could, and then clean it out good, disinfect it, and then this stuff is very good stuff here for wounds. Uh, the silver yeah yep as a rescue i mean i get animals that have been chewed on by rats with holes that are this big in them you know gopher snake one time that got stepped on by a horse and his whole tail half of his tail was gone you know that kind of stuff and you got to deal with everything yeah. respiratory infections mites you know i'm picking up two boas tomorrow morning that have mites so do you have a you have a good relationship with a, with a vet or you lear learned no no you just do it the vets refer people to me really yeah i have i had a vet i literally had to remove a fish hook that was this big from the belly of a red-eared slider because people had gone fishing and the slider ate it clear down its bed he took 45 minutes to get it out but i did without injuring the slider do you know how hard it is to hold the turtle's mouth open with four steps like this down its throat into its stomach that, yeah that seems pretty intense man. it that, was that, that definitely sounds pretty <laughs> 45 <intense>. minutes <laughs> but i did it you know and that's you know that's the kind of stuff that makes it not the injuries but learning new things trying to figure out new things that's what makes it fun you know yeah. if it's just all ball pythons i mean where's the fun in that well, you're kind of you, you're like you're kind of in it like trial by fire almost. Like sometimes, you, yeah. Like sometimes, you, the, and that's the best way to learn anything. I've always found is to experience it <coughs> and, and have to do it. That's how you. You know, you get all kinds of stuff, and you know, I started out with nothing, and almost everything here I've either picked up, you know, inexpensively, from somebody who didn't need any more, or some people have donated. Like, 
Uh, John, the guy that used to build happy snake cages, he was moving, retired. He gave me a bunch of happy snake cages. So I used those. Um, Freedom Breeder had a couple of extra, those big cages over there that were just sitting outside and drove up Freedom Breeder and picked them up. I mean, that's how these things go, you know? The whole rescue is funded by the educational shows I do or out of pocket. Don't get donations, basically. You know, I mean, every once in a while somebody will donate something, but... So, you, since 02? Is that what you said you were doing oh, wait. this? Oh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yep. Okay. 11 years. Every every weekend I do two to three uh, shows, events, birthday parties or whatever, you know, and have built up, you know, I don't know how to say it, but a reputation over that time and built up people that I know, like you, you know, meet from mutual friends or whatever and, you know, just takes off. You get your get get your name out there a little bit more. He's gonna get his name out there a little yeah. bit more. He's gonna be getting more calls. He's gonna be more, go. more busy than you probably. <laughs> ToddTheSnakeMan.com. Everybody in Fresno, you know, <laughs> get up, Todd, man. He's not getting enough of you guys yet. No, nope. and I like I like the big stuff. I like the unusual stuff. You know, ball pythons are great. They're a great first pet, but they're ball pythons. I mean, they're easy. you know, they're, they're easy. They're, they're easy. You know, they're for easy the most part, care. okay? I, I think they're, they're, they're you know, fairly easy. But, but you know, they're... things like African rock pythons. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's take a look at some of the animals here. Yeah, weird... Now, you got to understand something. Those of you who don't know African rock pythons, they're one of the five aggressive snake species in the world. This is mine, and he's getting ready to shed. Taz the aggressive human species of the world. You see that? This is Rocky Balboa. He's about 25 years old. 20, 25 years old. 25 years old? Yep. 25 years old? Yeah. That's an old python. Yeah. But he's wow. a... Feel he's the getting, scales. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's Feel the difference. Feel the difference between that and the berm. Oh, he's much more... Much, rough. Much rougher. There's so much yeah. rough, yeah. The scales are just so much more... But... He's getting ready to shed, but he is an absolute doll. I see that. You won't see this anywhere. No, no, this is not, I, you know, <laughs> this, not many African rocks that feel like you can just kind of reach up and pet on their head like that. But. Exactly. Yeah, oh, sweetie. Wow, man. His name is Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Rocky the Rock. Oh, here he comes. What's up, bud? Wow. So, how, how long have you had this guy? Uh, two and a half years now. And did he did he come to you this docile? Pretty much. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he was raised in a classroom. Okay. okay. Science classroom his whole life. So, um, but you know, I get a call, says, "Hey, you know, this it had been given to a store, and pretty much they kept him in a, from what I understand." Kept him in a tub for a lot of the time, and he ended up with mites and a respiratory infection. So, they ended up calling me, and I picked him up. That was like a, a you guys dog, saw that. Literally. That was that was like a yeah. I don't know how to describe that. I, yeah. That was that was He's different. A puppy dog. That was definitely different. Yeah. This is Splinter. He's about 10, 11 years old. Asian water monitor. People actually bought him at prehistoric pets and then figured out how much it's going to take to actually uh, take care of him and the size and food requirements and everything else and this is not a I don't know how else to say it but a normal pet so he basically pretty much just stays with me and will I've had him for eight and a half years now look at the size of those claws Wow but he's my buddy. He just goes, what's going on? Yeah, I know. Come on, get in your heat. Get in there. I'm not sure what Todd thinks he's going to do to top those two animals right there. That, that was, uh... Oh, okay, here we go. Come on. Come on. Let's get you. Come on. This is Cuddles. And he is 25 years old as well. And this, three snakes came to me because... They passed a law in a county in Arizona, or Nevada, I mean, where they couldn't keep snakes over, I believe it was six feet. And so without even meeting me in person, we ended up meeting and I picked up three snakes from him. Not your normal average everyday ball python. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know what you're talking about, man. That looks totally ball python to me. That's full ball python. That's just a really big ball python. Yeah, you're right. That's one of those voltas. That's a better Yeah, that's, that's a, a volta. volta. There you go. <laughs> and this guy, he's always thinking food right now because he was super skinny. So, you see the scars along the back here? He was caught underneath a, um, a refrigerator and got his face chopped up by the refrigerator fan. You see his face all chopped up there? Oh, poor dude, man. And so he's still in the... I'm feeding him more than anything else because you see how skinny he still is because of his face and the damage he had to it. He wouldn't eat for a long, long time. But he's eating great now. He's healthy other than being skinny. He'll stay with me until he's perfectly healthy. How long, how long have you been working with this guy? Uh, five months now. Five months, okay. okay. Something like that. And there's Missy. Yes, I know. I see you. You want food. <laughs> how's, how's her? Uh, is she classic pied temperament or is she? She's fine once she's out. You know, inside her house though, that's her house. Right. You better knock on the door. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But she's a big girl. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely a big girl. That's, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that with the pie garrett's pie did not that face-to-face -face thing they were just doing like that would have been face on face this is olive oil and she was soaking in her water now how did you come up with the name like olive oil well it's an olive python i mean come on <laughs> it's, it's just I'm, I'm not i'm not making the connection <laughs> popeye olive oil come on are you yeah. sure i just said uh, olive python uh, i know named it's all different but you I know don't... If you had something to tell anybody who's looking to maybe start doing their own rescuing, like if you had the, the what's the best advice? You've been doing 11 years. That's mm -hmm. that's a long time to be doing rescues. You've learned a thing. You better two. love what you you better love it. Yeah. Okay. Um, because quite frankly, 90% of it is red-eared sliders, ball pythons, bearded dragons. Okay, that's red-tailed boas. Okay, that's 90% of rescues. After that, you get maybe 1% that's really fun. So you better enjoy the average to really do it right. And you can't expect, I mean, this is not a money-making thing. I have about two grand out of pocket every year, you know, but that's, that's, I do it for the animals though. That's what I do it for. And to me, that's worth it. Cool. I, you know better explain it than that. On my way home now, uh, Todd, I just want to thank you for having me again. I'd like you guys to go check out all his information down below. It takes a special person to care for as many animals as needed care that other people just kind of drop the ball on and dedicate your life to that. So that's a, that's a big thank you to Todd. So if you guys go check out his stuff and, and support him whatever way you can, I'd appreciate it because he's putting a lot of work into taking care of like where other people drop the ball. So I think he deserves it. All right, you guys, have a good night, day, whatever you're having. <laughs> and it's not a combo, it's just a straight new gene. But look at it. Look at the way the alien heads are joined together on the dorsal and coming across and creating this one whole solid feature right here. That is awesome.